Fukushima. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says more contaminated wastewater has leaked from the facility into the sea. The water contained high levels of radioactive strontium. Workers discovered water leaking from a pipe connected to a wastewater tank on Thursday. Workers closed some valves and the leakage stopped half an hour later. A spokesperson for a Tokyo Electric Park Company says about 12 tons of wastewater had leaked from a disconnected pipe joint. He says the company believes that a large portion of the water flowed into the ocean through a nearby drainage ditch. The utility is trying to determine how the joint became disconnected and how much water reached the sea. Radioactive wastewater also leaked last month from a different section of the same system of pipes. Last December, water leaked from another device within the plant compound. In both cases, the wastewater is believed to have flowed into the sea. Preparations are underway for the complex job of removing nuclear fuel rods from the number 4 reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. A hydrogen explosion severely damaged the building following last year's massive earthquake and tsunami. More than 1,500 fuel rods must be removed from the spent fuel pool before the building can be demolished. The plant's operator will use a special crane to remove the fuel. Workers will also construct a cover to prevent radioactive materials from leaking from the building. The structure will cover the upper part of the pool. The utility will also install a filter to prevent the spread of radioactive materials. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi plant expects to complete the cover by autumn of next year. It'll then remove the spent nuclear fuel from the pool and store it on the plant's premises. A robot will be sent into the damaged Fukushima Daiichi No. 2 reactor for the first time since last year's earthquake and tsunami. Tokyo Electric Power Company will use an 80-centimeter tall robot mounted with five cameras, a dosimeter and an audio recorder. A worker in an adjacent building will maneuver the robot through a cable link as it checks for damage to the suppression chamber and containment vessel. This will be the first inspection of the suppression chamber by a robot since the nuclear accident. A manhole will also be checked and radiation measurements taken in the area. Any damage to the suppression chamber and the containment vessel will have to be repaired before the vessel is filled with water to retrieve the melted fuel rods. Removing these rods will be a crucial step in decommissioning the reactor. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has sent a robot inside one of the damaged reactors. The inspection was aimed at pinpointing areas where water is leaking. The utility needs to repair the leaks before it can remove fuel rods and decommission the plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to fill the containment vessels of the reactors with water before retrieving the melted fuel rods. But highly radioactive wastewater continues to leak out of the containment vessels of the number one to number three reactors. So TEPCO first has to repair the damage to the containment vessels and suppression chambers underneath. TEPCO on Wednesday sent a robot with five cameras and a dosimeter into a scaffold around the number two reactor's suppression chamber. Workers maneuvered the robot to check about 90 percent of the upper part of the 125-meter donut-shaped chamber, but they found no serious damage or deformation. The utility says there were no leaks or water leaks or traces in manholes on the chamber where leakage had been suspected. But TEPCO has not been able to confirm the conditions of pipes connecting the suppression pool and the containment vessel, where the company also suspects water is leaking. The governor of Fukushima will ask the International Atomic Energy Agency to open an office in the prefecture. He wants the agency to help with the consequences of the nuclear accident. Yuhei Sato will make the request this summer when he visits the IAEA's headquarters in Vienna, Austria. The International Nuclear Watchdog has sent specialists to Fukushima since the disaster. Sato wants continued help with disaster response and decontamination work. 
During his visit to Vienna, Sato will also discuss a conference to be hosted by the IAEA and Japan's government in Fukushima in December. And coming to grips with the situation inside Fukushima Daiichi means preparing the plants and damaged reactors for the four-decade-long decommissioning process. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers have been at it for more than a year now, and they've still got a long way to go. TEPCO engineers sent a robot inside the suppression chamber of one of the reactors in April for the first time. That's an area located at the bottom of the containment vessel. The robot had five cameras and a dosimeter. It traveled around much of the suppression chamber, which is 125 meters in circumference. NHK World's Hidehiro Hanada talks about the results of the inspection. Hidehiro, what's behind the decision by TEPCO officials to inspect the suppression chamber? The main purpose of the inspection was to check for any damage to the suppression chamber. At reactor number one to number three, high temperature melted fuel made a hole at the bottom of the pressure vessel, and part of the fuel had fallen to the bottom of the containment vessel and is lying there in highly radioactive water. TEPCO had initially thought the water level in the containment vessel of number two reactor was about three meters, but the inspection using an endoscope has found the water is just 60 centimeters deep. This indicates the water is leaking from the suppression chamber. The government and TEPCO are planning to fill the con uh, containment vessel with water to retrieve melted fuel rods inside. Any water leak must be located and repaired before filling it with water. And this inspection was the first step in achieving that. Tell us uh, uh, more details of uh, the inspection itself. Hi. Uh, this is an image of the south side corridor. The cover for heat insulating material wrapped around piping fell off, but the heat insulating material itself remains intact. So TEPCO thinks no damage was done to pipes and the cover fell off due to the earthquake or corrosion. A red cylinder-like thing here is an inspection manhole cover leading to the inside of the suppression chamber. Before the inspection, TEPCO had assumed water is leaking from here, but no water leaks or damage was found this time. When the camera of the robot was tilted downward, it showed a water surface through a scaffold. It's believed to be radioactive water leaking from the containment vessel. Did engineers pinpoint the location of the water leaks? Unfortunately not. TIPCO checked about 90% of the upper part of the suppression chamber but found no serious damage to pipes or facility, which means water may be leaking from the lower part of the chamber or from the pipes connecting the suppression chamber and the containment vessel. But the lower part is submerged in the water and not easily accessible. So TEPCO needs to develop new method for inspection. How does the work to stop the uh, leaks fit in with the decommissioning process? But the inspection has just started, so we can't say anything with absolute certainty. But TEPCO has learned this time, locating leaks is difficult even at number two reactor, which is less damaged, therefore chosen to be inspected first. As for the number one and number three reactors damaged by hydrogen explosions, TEPCO has no idea at all when to start inspections. The decommissioning process at Fukushima Daiichi is expected to take 40 years, but without decommissioning, there is no end in sight. It's not an easy process, but TEPCO needs to use all available knowledge in Japan and elsewhere to bring the situation under control as early as possible. Definitely lots of work ahead. Thank you very much, Hidehiro. NHK World's Hidehiro Hanada on Nuclear Watch.